Welcome back, everybody, to Organic Chemistry. Today, we'll be looking at alkenes and alkanes. Uh, let's move on. The properties of alkanes, the general formula is CN, H2N plus 2. Uh, remember that all carbons are sp3 hybridized because they're bonded to four different species. Um, they are, they're saturated as they contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. Their melting and boiling points increase as a carbon chain increases as the number of electrons per molecule increase and the van der Waals forces of attraction increases. Thus, more energy needs to be put in to break the bonds between adjacent molecules. Thus, melting and boiling point both increase. Their viscosity also increases because the attraction between molecules is larger. So you can say that the alkanes get stickier or get more viscous down the group. Um, or not down the group, sorry, as the carbon chain increases. And as the carbon chain increases, the flammability also decreases. Smaller chained uh, hydrogen hydrocarbons are mu much more flammable than long chained hy hydrocarbons. So the react let's move on to reactions of alkanes. They are generally unreactive because they are nonpolar, as the electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is similar, and thus they are not attacked by electrophiles, which are basically. Uh, they're not, they're not attacked by electrophiles because they do not have a region of high electron density. And they're not attacked by nucleophiles because they do not have a region of partial positive charge. So th those are two things that you must mention when you're when you're saying when you're explaining why alkenes are unreactive. But mainly it's because they're nonpolar and their electronegativity electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is similar. The carbon and hydrogen bond is relatively strong and takes quite a bit of energy to break it, so it did not re react easily. Uh, this is another point that you could add, but just for you to know. Uh, alkanes behave as organic solvents, hex for example, hexane, because of their unreactive nature. Okay, reactions of alkanes. So first thing we have is combustion. All organic molecules can be combusted. So combustion is a common reaction that all... Uh, organic molecules will undergo. So does alkanes. They are burnt in oxygen to produce uh, carbon dioxide and water. This is a general equation. Uh, CXHY will give you uh, basically the alkane plus oxygen give you, will give you carbon dioxide and water. You can balance the equation using this general formula, or you could just use brute force and do it. Um, but if it's x, if the subscript of uh, subscript of uh, carbon is x, so there'll be, there'll be x number of carbon dioxide produced, obviously. If there's a y number of hydrogen atoms, so y over two will get uh, y over two number of, of water molecules we produce, and you're going from um ox you've produced oxygen which is O2 molecule, your CO2 has two oxygens, so it'll be x, and H2 has only one oxygen, so you must divide this by two, which will give you x plus y over four uh, oxygen. So octane is found mainly in petrol, which is burned to give energy. So a large amount of energy is released when alkanes are burned. However, incomplete combustion can take place. This occurs due to the limited supply of oxygen or when there's uh, not enough oxygen when you're burning it. Or the carbon is not fully oxidized to carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is formed. So the gen there's no equation to, do to this except carbon monoxide will be formed, which is CO and H2O. Sometimes suit can be given, carbon can be given out as suit. Uh, will be, it can be carbon monoxide plus C plus H2O or carbon dioxide plus C plus H2O. It can be all those things, but you just need to know that this condition, I mean, when there's lack of oxygen, incomplete combustion will take place. So there's a few harmful effects of carbon monoxide. The first being a, it binds with hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is found in red blood cells and is basically what enables red blood cells to carry oxygen. Once carbon monoxide binds to it, it produces carboxyhemoglobin, which reduces the ability of the carbon, uh, which reduces the ability of the red blood cells to carry oxygen. They dissolve in water to produce carbonic acid, HCO3, and which leads to acid rain. Acid rain can kill crops, marine life, and corrode limestone buildings. So you can just take that down. They react with nitrogen oxides as NO and NO2, to produce photochemical smog, which is harmful to breathe in. So you just need to know these three harmful effects. And basically, this is basically what pollution is. There are other, there might be, a, there are other pollutants, but uh, the, during incomplete combustion, carbon monoxide is produced, and this is the effects of it. 
Okay, reaction of alkenes continued. Okay, first, next up, we have free radical substitution. So alkenes only undergo two reactions, which is um, combustion and free radical substitution. And as we discussed previously, a radical is um, an atom with one more electron, and they act as, um, like, like it's mentioned over here, a radical contains one extra electron as compared to the X. X can be anything. It can be carbon, it can be hydrogen. And they act as a test for alkene and alkenes. So we'll get to that. So first, before we move on to free radical substitution, you need to know what homolytic fission is. Homolytic fission is when the covalent bond splits um, in half. That means, okay, a covalent bond has two electrons, which is being shared between X and Y. And in homolytic fission, it splits in half. So X gets one extra electron and Y gets one extra electron, uh, gets one of the electrons from the bond, I mean, and they form Y radical and X radical. This can happen if a molecule containing, containing two uh, different uh, groups can split or it can be multiple groups as A, B, C, D, E. So if it splits over here, it'll produce um, a, a, an A radical and a B, C, D, E radical with the radical dot on B. Okay, so there's a few steps to free radical substitution and free radical substitution comprises of adding halogens to alkanes. And the first step is initiation. In initiation, the homolytic fission will take place using UV light as for energy. So it can be chlorine, it can be bromine, and it'll be two radicals, two, two radicals will be formed and breaking, like I said, breaking the covalent bond between, halog between the halogen. Next up, we have propagation and a radical is used up and another radical is generated. So that's basically what comprises of propagation. So in the reactants, there must be a radical and in the products, there must be a radical. So the first step is when um, the a chlorine radical attacks, um, in this case, it's ethane and will produce an ethane radical and HCl. So once it attacks, it will take one hydrogen away. And um, basically once it attacks, it'll take a hydrogen away and the CH bond will, uh, will undergo homolytic fission and the electrons will be transferred to CH. So that, that's how a CH2 radical is produced. Then a CH2 radical can continue to attack a chlorine molecule and it will produce CH3, CH2Cl and another Cl radical. So in both these steps, a radical is used up and a radical is produced. Um, sorry. So, or another case is, so basically this step can, these are the main two steps of propagation that you will need to write, that you need to know and you may need to write down for your examinations. However, there's no specific way that the radicals will propagate. So in this case, like I've shown over here, another chlorine um, radical attacks CH3, CH2Cl instead of CH3, CH3 uh, or ethane, and it'll produce CH3, uh, CH um, and Cl with a radical and HCl. So this can go on and on regardless of, um, and it, it, only, it only depends on the concentration of the halogen um, and uh, or the, not the halogen, I mean the radical, and it can produce uh, CHCl2, CL, sorry, CHCl2 or CCl3, 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 CHCl2, CH2Cl. So there's no specificity when it comes to free radical substitution, and it can go on in any way, any way or form and produce um, any form of halogen or alkane. But you just need to know these two main propagation steps, like I said. Then we have termination, is when two radicals merge to produce no new radicals. Um, so a chlorine radical can meet a chlorine radical and produce a chlorine back again, or a chlorine radical can meet a CH3CH2 radical and produce um, chloro chloroethane. Or in this case, two ethane radicals can merge to produce um, a four carbon chain, which is basically the carbon chain has doubled. So you just need to know that. And this can go on and on. So the chain can technically keep increasing. And that's why I said there's no specificity when it comes to free radical substitution. The alkenes, I think we can, um, so that's, that's all we have for alkenes. And those are the basic two reactions you need to know and, to condition, and the conditions, like I said before. Our condition being UV light for free radical substitution, which is shown over here. General formula for alkenes is CnH2n. They are called unsaturated hydrocarbons because they're not bonded to the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. Because they have a double bond, the double bond can, 
can sustain two more hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen, like, sorry, the, the double bond can split and produce two more hydrogen bonds. So hence it's unsaturated because they're not bonded to the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. Alkenes are produced during cracking. Um, cracking is the process where you break down long hydrogen, high, long chain hydrocarbons into small chain hydrocarbons that are more useful. So like I said, long chain hydro, hydrogen, hydrocarbon, sorry, are less flammable and smaller chain hydrocarbons are more combustible and then they, they're used as fuels because they're easily, easy to burn and they give out more energy. They're also less viscous. So they, I think they have more use, uses to it. Um, long, long chain hydrocarbons are mainly used for tar and in your roads, while small chain hydrocarbons are used as fuel. Um, conditions, high temperature and pressure with AL203 catalyst. So this is the condition for cracking, sorry. And products can be any of the following, alkene, alkene or hydrogen. So an alkene can break to give two, small, two smaller or three smaller alkenes. And a long chain alkene can break into an alkene and an alkene, or a long chain um, hydrocarbon can break into an alkene, alkene and hydrogen. I mean, that doesn't, the f again, you can't, you can't, there's no specificity when it comes to breaking or, breaking or cracking in this case. Just remember that the number of moles of carbon and the number of moles on, of hydrogen cannot increase. They can only decrease. Like the, the sum of atoms of carbon, the sum of atoms of hydrogen are the same as the long chain hydrocarbon in the first place. Okay. A reaction of alkenes. So due to the carbon-carbon double bond, it experiences electrophilic attack. As the double bond is electron dense due to the sigma and pi bond, over, sorry, the sigma bond and the pi bond overlap. So that gives, there's a lot of electrons in, that, in the double bond region and electrophiles are electron acceptors, um, which they can be the atom or a group of atoms that accept electrons and are attracted to electron dense regions. So that's the definition of an electrophile. And they'll be, they'll be attracted to the carbon carbon double bond and attack it. So the mechanism for this is electrophilic addition mechanism. And this, uh, this is due to, the, and the partial charges are induced by the electron dense double bond. I'll, I'll get to that. So let, let's look at this uh, alkene over here and X and X, or it can be any, any form. I just took X and X in this case is um, electrophile. It can be chlorine in this case or bromine. Um, so like I said, because of the electron dense region, the electrons on this covalent bond are, are shifted to this side. Yeah, they repel from this electron, which gives us a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. And this accepts electrons from this double bond, which is showcased by this arrow. But remember to showcase all these arrows that I've mentioned over here. So the electron from this uh, double bond is transferred to this uh, halogen or halogen over here because of the partial charge. And the electron that is in between and homo heterolytic fission takes place over here. Uh, which which means that the carbon the COVID, the electrons of the covalent bond is taken up by only one of the constituent groups. So uh, to summarize, one electron the electrons sorry are transferred from this double bond into this partially positive partially charged partially positively charged halogen, and this electron in this covalent bond is transferred to this halogen, which gives which produces a carbocation, and a bond is formed between the carbon and the halogen. Um, and the next, uh, the next halogen, which has accepted the electrons, has a partial negative charge, and a carbocation is formed because uh, it, a carbon a carbocation is formed because electrons are lost in this um, from this bond over here because it's been transferred to this, which gives it a positive charge, and then we see electrons being transferred from this uh, halogen halide because it has an excess of electrons from this covalent bond, and it's transferred to this, producing um, two charges. Remember the uh, not two charges, two bonds. The atoms are added to both carbons, like, and it's put across the bond. It's wrong to put it on the same or one or one carbon or on the same axes. They are across each other. So let's look at some reaction conditions. Um, the mechanism is the same. They will follow the same mechanism, and the the electrophile will just change. In this case, it's HBr. Oh, sorry. So instead of X and X, you'll, you'll draw H and Br. And obviously, we know that Br is more electronegative, so hydrogen will have the positive charge. Um, next up, we have water. Water, again, OH minus, sorry, OH will be positively charged, and because oxygen is more electronegative, you'll have the negative uh, partial charge. Um, so basically, the mechanism doesn't change. This is, it's the same mechanism as such. 
except the conditions are different. So we have hydrogenation, which is adding of hydrogen. Uh, the condition is hydrogen gas, nickel catalyst at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and next up, we have adding of halogen, which can be chlorination, bromination, and halogen in the dark. So you can mention in the dark, or you don't have to mention it, just write halogen and alkene. Um, like I said before, this um, free radical substitution was a test between alkenes and alkenes because alkenes react with halogens in the presence of UV light, while alkenes react with halogens in, in without the presence of UV light or in the dark. Next up, we have adding hydrogen halide, which is HBr or HCl, and the, again, similar reaction me mechanism, electrophilic addition, and the conditions are the same as halogen, which is just a hydrogen halide and alkene. Next up, we have um, addition of water. This will produce an alcohol, and it's called hydration. Um, the conditions are steam and dilute H3PO4. Let's look at oxidation of alkenes. So the carbon carbon double bond can be broken and it will be oxidized. So my, uh, first in first in one case with mild oxidation, which occurs when you add cold dilute KMnO4, and it will produce a diol, uh, diol as in two oxygens. I mean two hydroxyl groups, which is alcohols. So we have a diol. Next up, we have oxidation by which is hot and concentrated uh, KMnO4. This is mild oxidation. This isn't called strong oxidation. It's just called oxidation. Um, and, and the carbon-carbon double bond is broken. And it happens in these two cases. If it's, a, if it's a terminal carbon, it'll produce, the terminal carbon like this one will produce carbon dioxide. And the carbon that is attached to a side chain or R in this case, is will produce a carboxylic acid. Another situation is in this case, if, if the carbon with, that, is, that has a double bond has two R groups or two side chains, it'll produce a ketone. And if it's a, has only one side chain, it'll produce an aldehyde. Uh, a ketone is characterized by just C double O, or C double bond O, and aldehyde is C uh, Sorry, this is not this is not an aldehyde. This is a carboxylic acid. My bad. Um, this similar splitting can take place for arenes or or it's not not arenes. Sorry, um, circular uh, alkenes, which is basically the double bond will split as such. Um, and it'll produce, in this case, since it's, um, it's only bonded to one side chain, it'll produce a carboxylic acid. Next up, we have addition polymerization. A polymer is a long chain molecule made up of small repeating units. A monomer is a small unit that forms polymers. So alkenes are, poly are, are monomers and they produce a polymer. And let's, let's, look up, let's look up for the repeating units in this case. So this is a repeating unit. And this is the uh, polymer. So remember that N, uh, and if you draw the alkene out with a double bond, that represents the monomer. And if you draw it in this case, it, re it represents a polymer. And N re refers to the number of moles of uh, alkene, I mean, ethene in this case. So looking at repeat units, so as you, like I said, the basically in addition polymerization, the bonds in between break and they form single bonds with other similar molecules. So you, all you have to do is look for repeating uh, pattern between two carbons, sorry. So as you can see over here, this is one, if you follow my mouse, this is one unit, this is another unit. So how do you form the uh, monomer? You just break away these bonds and you put a double bond in between as such. And that's the monomer. Okay, we'll move on to halogen, halogen alkanes in the next lecture. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone understood what I was trying to say. I apologize for any stammering and struggle and my struggle to speak at points. Um, if you have any doubts, please let them know. Let me know in the comment section and share your opinions on my videos. Thank you so much and goodbye.